Hello everyone, uh, welcome to uh, today's uh, class. We will briefly go to matter that we discussed last time. If you recall, uh, we discussed uh, initially uh, the uh, reductions uh, using uh, lithium aluminum hydride and uh, aluminum chloride. And of course, we saw how the re selective reductions can be carried out. Then uh, we uh, proceeded to look at the um, reactions of um, Redal and uh, the Redal comparison with uh, lithium aluminum hydride and we saw how uh, important uh, is this reducing agent uh, because it is better than lithium aluminum hydride in many sense for especially from handling point of view. And uh, it reduces the acid to the corresponding alcohol. But uh, interestingly, uh, when you take uh, epoxy alcohol, both redal and aluminum, lithium aluminum hydride, they lead to uh, selectivity which is different from that of diabol. We then of course uh, discussed the mechanism involved in uh, those reactions and saw how in the lithium aluminum hydride and redal case intramolecular reduction of the epoxide gives 1,3-diol uh, as the major product and in the case of dibol, uh, it is an intermolecular reduction that allows the uh, formation of 1,2-diol as the major product. And uh, then towards the end we discussed uh, Lucci reduction and as I mentioned after a lot of uh, uh, combinations, uh, uh, the Lucci and Gemal uh, found out that uh, cerium chloride uh, 7H2O that means hydrated cerium chloride along with sodium borohydride uh, very comfortably uh, gives the reducing system uh, which allows reduction of uh, uh, say particularly carbonyl which groups which are uh, alpha beta unsaturated can be aldehyde or can be ketone and that leads to specifically reduction with um, the um, reducing agent to the corresponding allylic alcohol. This is something very uh, interesting because it is very easy to perform this reaction and this selectivity is very high. Then of course we also discussed how the ketones uh, uh, oxygen uh, and also alpha beta unsaturated ketones or aldehydes oxygen here uh, is more uh, Lewis basic uh, than the uh, corresponding uh, unsaturated ketones or say aldehydes. So uh, this uh, difference in the Lewis basic character of uh, ketones and alpha beta unsaturated systems was also exploited by the uh, Lucci and Gamal if in their reduction. So we will look at some, some aspects of it now in this lecture today. Initially it was felt uh, during the reaction that uh, more electrophilic aldehyde gets protected as aldehydrate and then gets regenerated during the workup. That means what is happening is that if suppose you have uh, a molecule that has say aldehyde here and uh, also it is a part of uh, a corresponding um, uh, ketone. So you have an R group here. So this particular compound uh, allows the reduction of the uh, ketone uh, over say for example aldehyde. This is the selectivity that is particularly found in the case of reaction of a molecule that contains both and aldehyde and the ketone. Under normal conditions aldehyde being more electrophilic in nature compared to the ketone uh, should get reduced with sodium borohydride or with any reducing agent. But the combination of uh, reagents such as cerium chloride heptahydrate and sodium borohydride 
allows uh, a kind of uh, aqueous medium because the reaction is also carried out in methanol as a solvent. So in methanol as a solvent everything is miscible and uh, at that time initially it was felt that the aldehyde uh, gets basically uh, formed as hydrate and uh, gets blocked uh, and does not react something like this and, uh, and the ketone remains as it is. So this is the intermediate that was proposed that under the conditions here when we have a cerium chloride 7H2O at that time when molecule containing both aldehyde and the ketone is exposed to these conditions the aldehyde basically gets blocked as a hydrate and now the reduction takes place onto this because this particular oxygen atom is more Lewis basic and therefore the cerium plus 3 coordinates with this which is readily available. And then during the workup uh, the, uh, the aldehyde is regenerated that means once the reduction has taken place this is what originally it was felt. Later on uh, more uh, detailed studies of uh, uh, these uh, mechanisms of involved in this particular reaction were carried out and it was found that methanolysis of sodium borohydride occurs to form methoxyborohydrides. That means as uh, I have already mentioned earlier that if we take uh, sodium borohydride normally sodium borohydride is um, uh, easily used in alcoholic medium but I also mentioned the earlier time that sodium borohydride does react with methanol or ethanol but slowly. So under these conditions it is expected that uh, what may happen is that the methanol reacts with sodium borohydride and forms uh, different species that means you have NaBH uh, say for example it, it can be a 4 minus N that means it can be 1, N can be 1, 2 or 3 or something of that kind forming this species and of course the corresponding hydrogen goes off. So this is the methoxyborohydrides which are uh, expected to form at this particular uh, junction uh, when sodium borohydride is used in methanol along with cerium salt. This uh, uh, so sodium um, methoxyborohydrides are obviously harder reducing agents because now you have methoxy groups attached to it and therefore the um, electron withdrawing nature of the methoxy group due to inductive effect makes the corresponding hydride here of the sodium borohydride as harder based on acid base principle, hard soft acid base principle. And uh, thus it allows 1, 2 reduction to take place. It is very clear that uh, a species of uh, this kind uh, should be involved because in it is expected that even methanol uh, has coordination with the cerium plus and of course now the modified methoxyborohydrides then interact uh, uh, and act as a reducing agent to this where the carbonyl oxygen has a kind of interaction with the H now because you can expect that now this it can become delta plus and therefore there is a coordination of the oxygen with the H plus and this is the path which is coming from the methanol. So basically what is happening is uh, cerium chloride activates uh, methanol in this particular fashion and thereby makes the proton very labile and uh, a harder acid. Now on the basis of HSAB principle what we expect that the uh, reaction of an alpha beta unsaturated ketone may proceed in this particular fashion. So what is the initiation that happens uh, that is uh, when an alpha beta unsaturated ketone comes in contact with uh, the proton that is being released from methanol which in turn complexes with the cerium plus 3 salt and therefore this more basic 
ketone of the alpha beta unsaturated system the more basic oxygen interacts with the uh, uh, harder h plus and thereby increasing the uh, uh, electrophilicity of this particular carbon atom making it a harder lewis uh, acid and to which uh, hydride then attacks this hydride is basically made up of trimethoxy borohydride in which there could be one methoxy or two methoxy or three methoxies it could be a mixture of all all the three types of methoxy borohydrides and therefore they form a uh, harder uh, lewis uh, base in terms of h minus which then interacts with the harder lewis acid at this particular carbon atom which is due to the uh, co uh, coordination of the oxygen which is a harder base with the harder acid here h plus released by the complexation or as a result of the complexation of methanol with the cesium 3 plus salt resulting into an allylic alcohol this mechanism has been well studied and reported in these two papers and uh, we can therefore assume that uh, based on the hsib principle the reaction proceeds in this particular fashion so this is what is uh, usually uh, expected that the reaction uh, allows the reduction of an alpha beta unsaturated ketone uh, to specifically form the corresponding allylic alcohol if we take various examples of the Lucci reduction we find that uh, as I mentioned earlier one of the examples is that if we take a ketone and an aldehyde only the ketone gets reduced and the aldehyde remains unreacted. If we take an alpha beta unsaturated ketone having an uh, aldehydic uh, group then uh, the ketone is reduced to the corresponding allylic alcohol and the aldehyde remains unaffected. So, these are the two examples which uh, I uh, discussed uh, where initially what was felt that uh, the aldehyde group gets blocked under the reaction conditions as a hydrate. But then the mechanisms which we discuss where mixed methoxy borohydrides are formed uh, where it is expected that the ketonic oxygen is more Lewis basic and similarly alpha beta unsaturated ketones oxygen is more basic than the corresponding aldehyde here for example here. And that is the reason why the aldehyde does not react uh, with the reducing agent and specifically the ketone or uh, the ketone of an alpha beta unsaturated ketone uh, redu gets reduced which is exactly opposite to um, what normally one would expect because aldehyde is more electrophilic than ketone or aldehyde is more uh, electrophilic than the corresponding enone. In another example in which uh, an enone was taken and a, a ketone was taken in the same molecule as you can see that the uh, enone gets reduced to the corresponding alcohol allylic alcohol and the saturated ketone remains as it is. Again we can think in the same fashion that the ketone here is uh, more electrophilic in the nature whereas enone is less electrophilic because of the double bond. Uh, and exactly on the basis of the uh, larger Lewis basic character of an enone ox oxygen versus uh, saturated ketone the reduction of the enone occurs. And uh, if one takes for example uh, an example of uh, this type where an enone is there and an ester is there uh, we have already discussed that uh, the ester carbonyl uh, here of course is uh, much less electrophilic uh, here uh, and, and enone because of the double bond being there reacts uh, specifically to form this. And here also as one can see that there is a stereo selectivity involved. Since this particular carbon-carbon bond is alpha oriented the hydrogen which is coming 
is from the beta side. So, uh, not only that uh, there is a chemo selectivity, th these are the examples of uh, chemo selective reduction. So, because you have uh, one type of uh, uh, aldehyde or ketone and the, uh, the there are two different types of uh, carbonyl compounds in each case and therefore, it is a chemo selective reduction. At the same time, it is also stereo selective reduction, chemo selectivity and stereo selective reductions occur. So, both uh, these are very important aspects and a number of uh, examples have been uh, reported in the literature where the utility of the sodium borohydride cerium chloride combination which is known as Lucci reduction uh, is uh, used in a number of uh, uh, synthetic uh, transformations. Now, uh, we see the stereochemistry in reductions of uh, ketones. Uh, if we take uh, locked ketones, we find that a reduction occurs from less hindered side. So, for example, if we take a case of this bicyclic ketone, which is uh, two norborna known or it is also called as bicyclo 2, 2, 1, heptane 2 ohm. Now, if we see the um, positions of the hydrogen around the carbonyl group, then we will see that the endo side of the uh, molecule is sterically more hindered than the exo side. For example, there are three endo hydrogens uh, which are uh, at the lower side of the molecule, whereas uh, there is only one hydrogen which is blocking the face of the carbonyl group from the exocyte. Therefore, when a reducing agent approaches this particular molecule, it sees more steric hindrance from the endocyte and therefore, it reduces the carbonyl group from the exocyte or the hydrogen is transferred from the exocyte resulting into the formation of the endo alcohol. On the other hand, if we take a somewhat similar example, but with different substitution like for example, camphor. In the camphor case, the carbonyl group now has a slightly different uh, endo and exo uh, selectivity. Here as you can see that the exo phase has two methyls here on the top which are blo blocking the face of the exocyte. On the other hand, the endocyte has only the three hydrogens which were present in the case of two norborn unknown. But because of the closeness of the methyl groups here to the carbonyl group, the exocyte is sterically more hindered and therefore, the reducing agent approaches the carbonyl group from the less hindered endocyte resulting into an exo alcohol. So, basically what is happening is that in log cases where there is no possibility of any conformation change, the reduction always occurs from the less hindered side. If we take uh, less uh, rigid cyclohexanones, then we obviously get mixtures uh, where we can see how uh, the distribution of the products occur. For example, if we take uh, a case like this where of course, we have put tertiary butyl. So, it is a kind of locked because the tertiary butyl group would always uh, remain in an equatorial uh, orientation of the uh, molecule and therefore, the when the lithium aluminum hydride attacks uh, as you can see what is found is that the reduction occurs uh, mainly from the axial side that means the hydrogen approaches from the axial side leading to 92 percent of or the of the equatorial alcohol. That means that since the OH group is, uh, is bigger than the hydrogen obviously and the, the aluminum part would react with the alcohol of course, when, when the reduction occurs there is a chelation with the lithium plus and then eventually the O minus which is going to form would interact with the ALH3 which is released and that will give OALH3 and upon workup 
we get the corresponding OH. But then when the lithium aluminum hydride is a small reducing agent, it prefers to attack uh, in such a way that the larger OH or the OALH3 minus goes to the equatorial side. But then uh, if we say take a hindered ketone something like this where now deliberately we have put a methyl group here. This is the methyl group whereas here it was only hydrogen. So this was not that much sterically hindered. So if we put a methyl group here and it is not a locked uh, particularly molecule as such but it has a methyl group which is axial. So uh, if this is reduced as you can see that the major product is the one that is between the two it is 45, 55 but even then it is slightly more than the uh, equatorial alcohol. So you can see that the preference of reduction occurs from the equatorial side so that we get actual alcohol. So the actual alcohol formation occurs because the uh, equatorial side is somewhat. So this side is somewhat less hindered compared to this side and therefore we get 55 percent of the alcohol which is actual alcohol via the reduction from the equatorial side uh, whereas the uh, actual side reduction gives 45 percent. Now if we increase the uh, bulk of the reducing agent because lithium aluminum hydride is relatively small in terms of steric uh, size and therefore if we increase say lithium aluminum tri-tertiary beta oxyhydride or lithium boro secondary um, uh, butyl uh, borohydride or any of these kind where there are big bulky groups present on the reducing agent and there as you can see that reduction occurs preferably from the equatorial side and then 99 percent more than 99 percent of the actual alcohol is formed because of the uh, this particular portion being sterically hindered and therefore a reduction prefer preferentially occurs from the equatorial side. This is the equatorial hydrogen. So this is uh, how one can uh, expect that the reduction of cyclohexenones can be predicted. Now we have uh, lithium borohydride as a reducing agent which can be easily prepared from sodium borohydride and lithium bromide. We take the combination of the two and then as you can expect that sodium bromide will uh, precipitate off from here if sodium and then lithium borohydride will form uh, and there will be sodium bromide as a byproduct. So we get the lithium bromide, borohydride very readily. Because of the lithium plus nature which is uh, uh, harder uh, compared to sodium plus uh, the uh, reduction occurs not only of aldehyde and ketone but also acid chloride, epoxides, uh, this, um, this should be ester and uh, the lactone. So we can uh, expect the reduction of these types of molecules to take place. But it is interesting that we are basically trying to compare sodium borohydride uh, with lithium borohydride here. So because the, there is a difference in terms of uh, the sodium versus lithium plus and lithium plus is harder therefore it is able to reduce even like epoxide esters and lactones. But it is not sufficiently since even then there is a borohydride part which is relatively um, uh, mild reducing uh, part and therefore the nitro cyano or carboxylic acids are not reduced. And uh, lithium borohydride is uh, found to be soluble like 4 grams in 100 grams of ether or 21 grams in 100 grams in tetrahydrofura. It is mostly used in the reduction of esters and lactones to diols as we have already shown it here that can be easily done. But if uh, uh, we have a molecule in which there is uh, uh, a, an acid to be reduced then of course we use borane, diborane or BH3 uh, 
say THF complex or THF complex or any such thing which is the source of BH3 reduces the acid to the corresponding alcohols. So, we see it very clearly that if we take lithium borohydride, it reduces esters in presence of acid, in presence of carboxylic acid, but borane reduces acids in presence of ester. So, this is something that it is important for uh, all of you to remember that lithium borohydride and diborane they complement each other in terms of reactivity. And uh, as I mentioned esters are, uh, are easily reduced similarly lactones are reduced to the corresponding uh, diols. One of the best uses of lithium borohydride is to deprotect a chiral auxiliary like we can see that we can take a uh, this particular molecule in which this path is a chiral auxiliary this path here and uh, because of uh, uh, this path we can make an anion here with say LDA and say add methyl iodide here as an electrophile we can introduce here the uh, methyl group. So, after the methyl group has been introduced here which is based on the uh, side chain which is present and uh, this is an optically active and therefore this is a highly diastereoselective alkylation. And uh, when we need to remove the auxiliary from here uh, what is done is uh, simply use lithium borohydride which is soluble in uh, ether or THF and we can completely reduce this particular part which is uh, an uh, uh, easily uh, reducible part with lithium borohydride equivalent to ester type of thing is, is a, and then we can get the corresponding CH2OH. So, uh, this is one of the best uh, examples where lithium borohydride has been used uh, in, in, in terms of deprotecting the chiral auxiliary. So, if we look at uh, the reactivity profile sodium borohydride is much less reactive which is uh, uh, comparable with uh, lithium borohydride which is more uh, reactive than sodium borohydride as we see in this in these examples and which is more uh, now again uh, comparable with um, lithium aluminum hydride uh, and lithium aluminum hydride is much more reactive than lithium borohydride. So, we have the lithium aluminum hydride versus uh, uh, lithium borohydride uh, which is then compared to sodium borohydride the, prof the reducing power keeps decreasing. And that has to do with the lithium plus here and of course uh, comparison with sodium plus and boron versus aluminum. So, this is how the reactivity profiles have been found. So, we will stop it at, at this stage today and uh, you can go through these uh, reactivity profiles of sodium borohydride, lithium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride and uh, try to understand what I discussed and we will continue with the reductions of uh, various kinds in organic chemistry using other reducing agents and see how do they uh, compare with the reducing agents that we have discussed so far. Uh, so, we stop it here and thank you, see you next time.